Okay, so we just covered the first uh, way to deploy a prediction. And again, we can deploy to the Salesforce object to score a data set in data flow or to score data as an API service. So just to recap what we did, we deployed the model uh, to an, uh, an object, Lightning component. We actually also did the scoring records right here. We are going next to do the scoring node in the data flow, and then we're going to talk about the API calls, how you can you know, call it uh, in general. And as a reminder, a prediction can have multiple models. You can have those under the same prediction. We're talking about the same data set, just as differently uh, filtered in different ways or segmented. You can map back to single objects. Within that object, you can actually, if there's some parent uh, objects, you can just click on the uh, th those objects and map to the other fields if you have for example account name on the opportunity and so forth we can also supplement as we talked about it and mapping all fees is necessarily uh, but that doesn't mean that if you don't have all the fees you're not going to get a service you're going to get that prediction or a score but it's just not going to be accurate right so if i need you to tell me the city and tell me the item and tell me the month and tell me you know the discount to tell you, you know what to do um, I will still tell you something if you just give me the city and the item, but it's not going to be perfect. All right, so, and again, we covered this. So if you just want to take a look at the slides, um, again, we did this from um, deploying the model. And um, this is where I talked about under object field. So you could see these little arrows and you can, even in the, you know, in the previous um uh, when I was going over this, there was a little arrow so you can go over the parent objects, whatever is related, and map those fields. And again, uh, you can create the uh, custom field, the particular segment, and actionable um, uh, actionable variables and so forth. So I'm going to skip over this a little bit. We did all of this. We're going to talk right now about deploying prediction to data flow score data set. Okay. So again, just a reminder, this is right now, as summer 20, this is still in the data flow, and you are scoring the data set. Um, ideally, you want to score it in a separate data flow because this is a daily data that's changing. There's new fields, uh, records that are getting created. So you might want to use it for dashboard perspective or exploration perspective, or even dark launch. Maybe you want to score the data behind the scene. So as, as folks, you know, um, do their, uh, you know, normal work, you're reading the data, you're reading that uh, predictions to, uh, you're scoring your prediction behind the scene and data set and kind of, you know, uh, contributing to monitoring how the model is doing from an accuracy perspective. So again, there's few, um, there's few things here to keep in mind. Um, the other use case, like I said, if you want a dashboard for the top, and uh, predictions so you can you know which to focus so for example if i'm an account rep and i don't want to go open my opportunities one by one and see the predictions for them i just want to see my all of them my opportunities all of them on one visualization and just look at them by you know maybe top uh, ascending or top descending and um because we are going to create a prediction that's not going back to an object we need to create a separate prediction that is not mapping to an object. Now this, I can use it either in the scoring node or in an API. So we're gonna go back, I'm gonna skip these slides and just show it to you directly. So if I go back to my, um, actually I'm gonna go back to the same story that I had in this case, and I will go and say daily sales ED work. And I had the story already open. And I'm going to use the same the same story again, the same model, but the difference is I'm going to go and click on uh, deploy uh, a model under a new prediction. But this time, let's just call it uh, maybe daily quantity, you know, again, YouTube prediction. But what I'm going to do is uh, actually give it like, you know, it's external, right? So it's not uh, going back to a Salesforce object, it's an external. Um, notice when I go to add object, this is where you are going to select the first one, deploy without connecting to a Salesforce object, which makes the deployment uh, next um, next uh, tabs very easy. There is no uh, creating a field, there is no terminal state, there is no mapping. 
you just add filters. If it is segmented, if you have different uh, models for the different data that you have in this data set, like, you know, again, daily quantity, small or large, there's none here. Uh, the variables, actionable variables, discount on promotion, same thing. Review this and deploy. And again, once this is deployed, now I can use it not for objects. Again, what I can do is in this case, I'm going to go to data manager and I'm going to use it in a data flow. Now, I can go back and reuse the same data flow. But again, from a best pers practice perspective, I'm saying you will want to either go deploy it in your normal data flow, your, your regular everyday data flow. Uh, in this case, I don't have anything specific. So I'm going to say, you know, uh, this is, uh, again, the, let's say, the YouTube data flow uh, scoring, um, again, daily DS. So what I'm doing here in the separate data flow, I can, again, read the object if I want, but most likely you have already created that data set that's based, uh, that, that story is based upon. It might be a combination of many data sets. So you can just go and edge mart it because it's already there. In my environment so i'm going to edge mart it and say load you know my uh, daily sales and um i believe i gave it youtube somewhere right here daily sales so i'm going to load this and then i'm going to use this node right here the prediction node the scoring node so when i click on it i'm going to say score you know score um you know my data set let's say there's only one source node right here, load my daily uh, DS. And what, which one I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use the external. So I have right here, external daily quantity YouTube, this one. This is the one I'm gonna uh, use to score this data set. I'm gonna create a prediction um, uh, field. So this is say predicted, uh, you know, daily uh, QTY, let's say in this case. And again, I'm going to use the same label as the uh, name. So this is a transformation. It's going to score the data. Um, uh, it's a reading the data. And um, and actually, I just realized that um, usually you will not edge mark the, da the data set that's sitting in the other data flow because that one is running every month. You know, let's say, for example, or every two weeks. So you want to actually load your actual data set that you're using for your live dashboards every day. So that could be something coming from somewhere else. And the last thing I want to do is register it. So I'm going to register, register, you know, my scored uh, DS. And this is going coming from the score. I'm going to say call it, let's say, daily uh, sales uh, scored. And let's just give it a YouTube right here. And um, once this is created, I can go and check a few things about it. So I'm going to update the data flow. Um, again, we have versioning right here in the UI. So you can check, you know, if this is a different version, different modification. While this is running, and I can go and check it in the data monitor. I'll let it run. Let's see. Okay, that was too fast. Let me see. Okay, it did run and I got all the rows. So maybe I am ready to go and check it out. Let's go to Analytics Studio. And uh, oh, actually I was looking at the wrong one. Um, just one second. So I have Daily Says YouTube. The other one I called it Scoring. And let me take a look. If I did run, I feel like I did not hit the run. So I have this one and right here, YouTube scoring. So let me click on it. I think I did not hit the run. Now, if I go to monitor, okay, there you go. It is running. Now, while it's running, I wanna explain one thing that I can do with the data once this is, um, uh, once I have the data set scored. So not only I can, um, again, this is just walking through the process. Once I get the data set, not only I can visualize my top predictions, you know, by product or store, whatever, but I can actually uh, do a residual chart. 
So if you know under model matrix, model evaluation, you will see a, a residual chart, but I can duplicate it right here. And um, no particular reason, um, but maybe you want to flip a little bit the matrix, you want to change the way it's looking. So under model evaluation, we see the prediction versus the, sorry, the actual versus prediction. Maybe I want to calculate the error and see how is the data, how is, how is it shaped, okay? So this is what we're going to be doing right now. And uh, for that, let me just go to this. I'm going to refresh this. Okay, this ran fine. So let me go and check the, um, the data set. And I will just try exploring it a, li a little bit. So this is the data set right here, the scored data set right here. And um, again, just to first, let me show you that we have now the average of the daily quantity. And I have actually the average of the predicted daily quantity. So again, for the topic of show me the top things, let's say I am uh, focusing on uh, a particular store. And again, I'm just going to use, you know, uh, city or, you know, one store is one in one city, Boston in this case. And I wanted to know what are my top um, items that are predicted to sell, right? So I'm going to put like this and I can see my top items predicted to sell. And, uh, and again, um, in real life or in real scenario, I would have future records future records with a month that is August. Right now, all of this data set um, is old. Um, you know, it's historical records. But assume I had a fresh data set and I had something coming up in August, and I can see in August per item what are my top uh, predicted daily quantities so I can work my way or I can manage something, uh, you know, get some insights. And this is different than looking at it at a record perspective, okay? All right, now, Back to what originally I wanted to show you, which is how to rebuild that uh, particular uh, chart. So I have average daily quantity. I have average predicted daily quantity. I'll change this to record level. So daily sales is the record. And I can see that these are my, um, these are my predicted, again, I, I sorted it. So let me unsort it, just makes sense. Okay, so one more time. So this is unsorted. So by records, I can see some of them, you know, I'm predicting uh, for 99, I predicted 117. Uh, for 557, I predicted 499. So again, this is what the data set that I used. And um, I can go and just, um, you know, I can visualize this. Actually, let me show you how you're gonna get the same chart. So I can go to scatter plot right here. And I will do a little bit of enhancements right here on the formatting. I can take out legend. It's just a unique. So I'll take out legend. I'll go to scatter plot. I'll make this 0 0.5. And I am, we and I, I mean, we are looking at the similar chart to the one we see under model metrics, the one that's called residual chart under model evaluation. And this is where we said that like, you want most of the data to be around this diagonal 45. This is the daily, the actual versus the predicted. And you want the data to be, you know, kind of uh, condensed around the uh, uh, this this particular line, that, which is the prediction. And again, it's a linear, right? So this is it's just predicting the, that uh, value. And I could see right here that I have some problems here because there's a dispersion here and here and even here a little bit too. Okay, so I wanted to flip this chart using some just analytics skills. So I'm gonna go to model, uh, sorry, to compare table. So I'm gonna go to compare table right here. And uh, I will create a formula, which is an error formula. So I click on the plus, go to add a formula. And um, I'm just gonna call it error or residual error. And it's simply A minus B. So if you look at it, it's just the columns A, the actual minus the prediction. So once I hit apply, I have this error. I can go back and hit close. And um, I can hide this average predicted daily. I don't need it anymore. The reason is I want to show you a new chart. So when I flip to scatter plot back, 
I am looking at the data in a different way. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at this is the zero error. So my prediction is exactly as the actual. And this is the dispersion. This is the actual and this is the error. So you don't want to be too much above or below the actual value, which relates to MAE. Again, this is one way I explain it in the model matrix. You know, simply your MAE is going to give you the spread. How far are you a little bit, you know, from, from the actual? And typically you want that, you know, that little shape that looks like a con. And the reason is, um, you know, as, as in a proportional perspective, you know, for a 200, if you're above by 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 20 and less by 20, that's 10 percent. So for a 600 or let's say 400, I expect you to be above if, if you take the 10 percent above by 40 and less by 40 and so forth. Right. And again, I can see that there is something going on for the large daily quantities that needs some uh, revisiting the model metrics and so forth. So that is the second way you can deploy uh, the predictions, uh, again, to a scoring node, your scoring data sets. You can do anything you want with it, uh, specifically, again, either examining the data, um, uh, dark launch of the um, uh, prediction, you know, under the hood, you're, you're monitoring it, uh, or uh, more likely is just showing top predictions, bottom predictions on a dashboard or on a visual that's embedded on the particular um, uh, object or a chart in that case. So uh, to tie it up also, the last thing is using that model to, uh, I, I'm going the other way, um, to through API. So through API, it's kind of out scope here because it is purely building the API. So just by the way I just deployed this prediction in, in this last section, I can go and call this uh, through API. I can call the prediction. I uh, provide the fields and the values, and it will return for me the score, the explanation, and the actions. Notice in the data flow that it only gives me the score, no actions, no, no explanations. But through the API, I can call all those three fields. I recommend going to this link. You can you know, just check in the help how the full documentation, if you go to this blog, you can see uh, in detail uh, how to set up an API service. And it's, again, all about pretty much the API in this case, uh, building it. But again, the call, the service is there. Um, we did not touch about licensing and so forth, but pretty much you do need that license, of course, to use that service. And with that, I think we covered most or, you know, the different ways you can deploy the prediction. Remember, this last mile of the journey, which typically is the hardest, is made super easy by having Einstein Discovery, uh, Einstein Discovery part of the bigger platform, Einstein Analytics Plus, having the data layer, sorry, having the mechanism to deploy it back to Salesforce from a native perspective, deploying it back to scoring the data set or as an API service.